So begin by allowing your body to become comfortable. Find a position of your body that feels comfortable for you right now. Maybe it's sitting in a chair. Maybe it's sitting on a cushion. Maybe it's lying down. In any case, find a position or posture for your body that feels comfortable for you right now. And settle into that comfort. Notice that comfort is in that posture and enjoy it. Maybe it's the feeling of your body touching the chair or the cushion. Maybe it's the feeling of being supported by the ground. Notice what's comfortable about the posture that you've chosen. And having settled into a comfortable posture, allow yourself to relax. Notice any muscular tension that's present for you in your body, perhaps around the jaw or the shoulders, the arms, your legs, your feet. If you find tension anywhere in your body, See if you can allow those muscles to relax. Settle into this comfortable, relaxed posture and enjoy it. And having established this comfortable, relaxed posture, invite a gentle, easy smile to your face. It doesn't have to be a huge grin. It doesn't have to be an enormous smile. Just a gentle, easy smile on your face. When we change the muscles in our face to smile, different chemicals are released in our nervous system that ease us towards happiness. So establish that smile and enjoy it. In this way, we've prepared the body for metta practice by finding a comfortable posture, relaxing into it, and inviting a gentle, easy smile to our face. And having taken the time to do that, let's begin to prepare the mind for metta practice. Take a moment to reflect on different aspects of your life that you're grateful for. 
It could be anything. It could be something big or something small. It could be something ordinary or something really special that's happening for you right now. Whatever it is, reflect on different things in your life that you're grateful for. Maybe it's a friend that you have. Maybe you're grateful for your family. Maybe you're grateful for the food that you ate today. Or something totally ordinary, like the ability to breathe. Whatever it is, reflect on one or more things that you have to be grateful for. And notice as you reflect on these things that you're grateful for, if there's any response in the emotional body, maybe your smile widens, or maybe a sense of warmth comes into your heart. If there is any positive emotional response in your body, notice that and really enjoy it. Continue to reflect on things that you're grateful for for another moment. Very good. Now we're going to practice loving kindness for someone that's easy for us to love. This could be a real person or an imaginary person. It could be a human or an animal. Often people like to choose babies or dogs or cats. Those are great choices. Small children or cute animals but really it could be anyone that's easy for you to love. Choose someone in your mind that's relatively easy for you to feel love and happiness and warmth for. And having chosen this person, real or imaginary, whoever they are, consider what you'd like to say that's loving towards this person. Maybe it's a simple phrase that you say again and again. 
like, I love you, or I care about you so much. Or maybe it's a lot of different things that are very specific to this person. I just want you to be so happy. I want you to flourish in your life and give your unique gifts to the world. Either way, consider something loving that you'd like to say to this person in your mind, this person that's easy for you to love. You can use this phrase or series of phrases to direct love towards this person, this easy to love person. Saying the same phrase over and over again, every few seconds. I love you so much. I love you so much. I love you so much. Or saying many different phrases, even a continuous stream of positive, loving, caring talk directed towards this person. In any case, use mental talk to direct love and care towards this easy to love person. If you'd like, you can also use visual images of this person, perhaps at a time when they were very happy, or imagine them being happy, laughing, playing. Some visualization that feels appropriate. It's just an option. In any case, cultivate an attitude of love and friendliness and care for this easy to love person. Notice how this makes your body feel. If as you cultivate this attitude of love, you feel love or care or happiness in your body, in your emotional body, notice that and really enjoy it. Savor it, soak it up.
Allow yourself to enjoy any love or happiness that arises during metta practice. In a moment, we'll switch the object of our focus, of our love, but see if you can maintain and continue and even grow any feelings of love or happiness that arise, even as we switch who we're directing toward this love towards. Consider someone in your life that's difficult for you to love. Just a little bit difficult. They don't have to be your worst enemy. They don't have to be the person that hurt you the most, but someone that's difficult for you. Perhaps an annoying coworker, a neighbor that's rude, someone that said something unkind to you recently. Not an evil person, not an enemy that's ruined your life, but just someone difficult. They're not fun to be around. You don't enjoy their company. Maybe you don't even like them very much. That's fine. We all have these people. In any case, they also deserve happiness and love. And we'll be happier ourselves if we can give them that happiness and love. So we just wanna practice trying that. So in the same way, having chosen this difficult person in your life, see if you can say something loving or kind to them. Maybe the phrase, same phrase over and over again, or maybe many different phrases. Something like, I just want you to be happy. All I want is for you to be happy. May you be happy. Anything you say is fine, so long as it's positive and loving and kind. Again, see if you can use mental talk phrases to direct an attitude of love and kindness towards this difficult person. If you find it easier, you can use images instead, visualizing this difficult person being happy, laughing, playing, enjoying life. Maybe imagining them if they were less difficult, less rude or ornery. It doesn't matter so much how you cultivate this attitude of love and care, whether it's talk or images, The attitude is the most important thing. See if you can cultivate this attitude of friendliness and care, even for this difficult person.
As you do this, notice what emotions, if any, arise for you. Maybe this brings up feelings of frustration or anger or sadness as you consider this difficult person. If so, no problem, no need to push that away. That's a very normal response. Just allow that without getting bogged down by it. Maybe there's a neutral response where not much is happening. You're just kind of okay with this person, okay with this activity. No problem there either. Just keep practicing. But if it so happens that any positive emotions arise, a feeling of love or friendliness or care for this difficult person, despite their difficulty, notice that and really enjoy it. It's a very wholesome form of pleasure to feel love and friendliness, even for difficult people. So really enjoy that. And notice as well how difficult this experience is. If it's hard, you're welcome to choose someone easier to work with. Going back to your easy to love person or animal, or perhaps someone else entirely, just a friend or family member, for example. If you're enjoying this, you can stay with directing love and friendliness towards the same difficult person, working with them for a longer period of time. And if it's easy, you might consider switching to someone that's even harder. Maybe someone that did really hurt you. Someone that was an enemy for you in your life. Someone who played a major negative role in your life. That's an option as well. It can be very powerful and very healing to direct love towards such people, even though they hurt us. So really the choice is yours, who you'd like to direct metta or friendliness towards and how you'd like to do it. Just continue to cultivate an attitude of love and friendliness. Continue to cultivate metta for another few moments.
Very good. Now, take a moment to look back on this practice period. What happened for you? See if you can remember that and consider whether there were any challenges that you faced or any insights that you had, any learnings. Take a moment to reflect on what this practice period was like for you. And as you're ready at your own pace, you can come out of the meditation period. 